let's talk about the stuff that everyone's been trading, the fun stuff, the, the interesting stuff. So I saw a lot of runners today and, uh, and these are the ones that I know of. Um, let me know if there's more. Oh shit. And sky age. So those are the four that really, um, I've been, you know, just looking at on my phone. Um, is there any other ones? Yeah. And so the, the way we'll do this is that we'll, we'll kind of go over, oh, MXE, the energy one. Okay. So we'll cut, so we'll go over some of the movers. And then I want to talk about like what trading this market's been like, what's the hardest part, you know, just maybe in general, or maybe recently I'm going to invite some a couple of people on. So if you want to come on, um, I'm going to give priority to junior mods um, and, you know, people that are really active in chat uh, first. Um, and, and we'll talk about just in general, does it kind of be like a trading rehab? I'm going to try, you know, hopefully this doesn't last like, hopefully this isn't going to be a two hour webinar. I want everyone to have their Friday night. Maybe, you know, this will probably be like an hour. And um, uh, yeah, so let's get started. So let's talk about these movers, right? All right, so let's start with INDO. Now, INDO is the stuff, is, is the kind of stock that Harry and I were talking about in the last webinar that I did, right? Hey, this is my Friday night, right? Um, this is the kind of sto uh, stock, right? and, and this is, I planned on doing this too. I planned on having this at the ready. So I can open multiple, we're going to open multiple different webinars for today to go over stuff. It's going to be like a rehab review kind of a webinar because, sorry, I couldn't really prepare anything for this week. All right. And so like what we were talking about with Harry is right, we were really talking about, you know, we, we really focused on this multi-day longs, right? You know, these trend dip buys, these multi-day continuations on stocks that just don't really give up on the daily and they linger because, you know, it, you know, going off of the philosophy trade when something that should happen, but doesn't right in a market where we saw this entire, the last six months, year to date, every single stock that pops drops, right? Everything dies. There's, there's sellers everywhere. And it's really hard to get any kind of day twos or day threes. So the, the stocks that are for some reason surviving, it's, um, it's almost like a red flag. It's like, wait, why, why did this one just not pop and die? Sorry. So anything that's been surviving day two, day three, day four, Right. And it's just not giving back the gain. There's a, re you know, that's kind of like, have you ever, I, I recently just saw a great poker. Uh, I've been watching poker, right? That's what I do when I, when I can't trade. I, <laughs> I, I, I watch poker. Uh, there's 75 right now. And it's, it's kind of, that's about half as much as I normally get, but it's kind of an odd time. Um, and, but it's increasing. Um, But anyway, um, I recently just watched a very uh, instructive poker hand with Tom Dwan. I don't know if you guys follow poker, but Tom Dwan is kind of like, um, he's a very, he's a very risky player, but he, you know, he has a, he has a different way to play the game in a sense. Like he was, he's very aggressive anyway. But the point is there was this really big hand where it was like eight people to the flop. Right. And so there was like eight people to the flop, um, which is really rare. Normally it's like one or two or three, it's not one, but you know, two, three, four, that's average, right? And it was Texas told them there was like eight or nine people in the flop. Very popular poker room. Very popular poker um, play. You should all watch. It was, and anyway, uh, to, you know, the flop came and Tom Dwan had, uh, he had a pair of tens, but, you know, we could see that there was a whole lot of nothing in the hand. Obviously there's eight hands. Uh, it was like deuce, 10, deuce. And, and Dwan had queen 10, and this one other guy who initiated the raise had pocket aces, right? So Duan's, you know, and Duan's like third to act. And, you know, and he just, you know, the, the guy who had aces bet just to get everybody out of the hand. And Duan is sitting there with like five players behind him. And he's, and he, he decides to make a raise, right? And he decides to make a raise and, you know, the previous, right? And so this is where the, the analogy is coming in. Uh, there's five people behind him, four people, uh, fold and one person calls. Now, with Duan calling, uh, raising with five people behind him, that is something that really, really signals strength. Because if you're going to raise with five people behind you, it must mean that you have a really, really, really good hand. Because you don't just raise with five people behind you uh, if you have a mediocre hand, because 
what if you get raised, right? And because of that, if you're going to raise with five other people behind you, that really shows that you have a strength in your hand. But the, 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 the you know, it's poker, you can lie. The interesting part is Tom Dwan did not have that strong of a hand. So um, four people fold, but one person calls and immediately just like he knew that the initial razor had a pocket pair, you know, jacks, queens, kings, or aces. He knew that. Um, but because one person called knowing that what, that the initial razor who had pocket aces was strong and that Dwan must be strong, he still called. Dwan immediately knew that he had a deuce, right? It was it immediately because it's almost like the Monte Carlo problem, right? Um, if I ask you to pick between three doors, you know, there's, there's a car behind one door and two behind two, two car doors are goats, right? You're going to pick, you know, door number one. And if I ask you to move to door number two, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to, you know, it's been proven you get a little bit more chance, but it's, but it's not as obvious. But however, if I offered a hundred doors, right. And I said, you know, I offer you a hundred doors, try to pick the one with the car in it. And you say, okay, door number 69. And I say, okay, you pick door number 69. And then I remove 98 other doors and I leave door number 69 and door number 32. And, and I ask you, would you like to switch? There's a car behind one of these. It becomes very clear, obviously, that you're going to switch because what, what's the chances that he had to leave 32 open versus the chance that you happen to pick the one out of 100, right? And so that long analogy just to show when everything else is, you know, tanking, when everything else isn't holding, the one stock that kind of does, you're just like, it's kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. And that's kind of how you had to look at INDO. INDO had that, that X factor. INDO had that, that thing about it that didn't make it tank. And you can attribute, it's obvious, right? Because it's an energy stock, like that's the reason, but it, you know, it had reason to hold it. It had some underlying driver that was keeping it up when in a market where nothing else could stay up. And that's what makes it like a sore thumb. 